Who? Madam Reading Clerk for items on the House third reading calendar. Second substitute HB 81, local school board meeting requirements, Representative Hall. This bill was heard in education with a vote of 10 to 2. Representative Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, during this last summer, I became aware of a school district which held a board meeting at a at, at Snowbird Ski Resort, which was miles and miles away from the school district uh, geographical boundaries. So second substitute HB 81 requires, with a few exceptions, that the school board hold the school board meeting within the geographical boundaries of the school districts. I appreciate speaking with uh, Dr. Patty Harrington, who is the, direct, the executive director of the Utah School Superintendents Association, about some concerns that uh, she initially had with the bill, but with those concerns we put together the second substitute, and with these concerns resolved, such organization has taken a neutral position on the bill. So again, I believe it's good fundamental policy to have, a school board, to have the school boards meet within their own geographical boundaries, close to the constituents, close to the parents, close to the individuals that they affect. This increases both real and perceived accessibility, real and perceived transparency of the local school boards. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Discussion to the bill. Representative Briscoe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the sponsor yield to a couple of questions or more? Will the sponsor yield to a series yes. of questions? Yes. Proceed. Uh, I think we're, I, my understanding is we're referring to the Salt Lake City School Board. Is that accurate? Uh, I was made aware of, of that situation during the summer. That is correct, yes. Um, I wasn't going to out them, but. I was a member of the Salt Lake City School Board, 1998 to 2002, and I don't ever remember holding any school board meetings outside the geographic boundaries. My understanding was also that the purpose of the meeting was to do some planning. I don't think they approved any budgets. I don't believe they voted on any uh, I'm not sure that any votes were taken at the meeting. Uh, that was my understanding given to me by some school board members. Do I have that inaccurately? Uh, want... the, the, um, the meeting was, did take place. There was one item that was actually voted upon. Did any page... I have those uh, agenda, the agenda item or the minutes of that meeting if you would like to get that offline. But yes, there was in fact one business item that was voted upon. Well, I'm I guess my philosophical question for the body is if um, this isn't a matter better taken care of by patrons within the district than us as a school board, than us acting as a 75-member school board telling them where they can and cannot hold meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion to the bill? Seeing no further lights, we'll go back to the sponsor for summation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, again, I, I believe that this is good fundamental policy to make sure that uh, the school boards meet within the geographic boundaries. There are many individuals, many patrons who don't have the ability to go and, and attend a meeting wherever the school board decides to have that meeting. Uh, there are a few exceptions uh, set forth in the bill and that were concerns brought up by the school district superintendents association and those were resolved with the second substitute so again i believe this is good policy it increases uh, accessibility to the decision makers it increases uh, the um, the transparency for these uh, local school boards as well thank you thank you voting will now be open on second substitute house bill 81 local school board meetings requirements
Seeing all present having voted, voting will now be closed. Second substitute, House Bill 81, having received 48 yes votes and 25 no votes, passes this.